Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I wanted to provide an answer to one commonly asked question, which is about how to design a defense team for regular arena. I'm going to split this video into three portions. The first part will cover the end game defense team, like the defense team that you would design for the current stage on the international server. The second part will cover the mid-game defense team, which is roughly when Juggler and Listel are available to be used in auto-battling and defense formations. And the final part will cover the early stages defense team for players, let's say, on Southeast Asia server. Now, before I talk about the defense team though, I should break down the way that regular arena works. First, you only want to stay above 1900 points for the maximum rewards. If you've done that, you actually want to lose points because for your gold ranked matches, it seems like you can only fight against players who have a similar or higher ranking than you. Okay, So in my case, if I'm high ranked like I am right now at uh, the second place, I really only get matched against Mystic Star. right? And since I'm in second place, I'm facing all the top players on my server. In other words, whales. So it makes my fights much more difficult. Which is why I purposely run a suboptimal defense team. Because that way, people, are, people who take a look at my party are more likely to attack me and cause me to lose points. Right? Defense fail, defense fail, defense fail, defense fail. So I actually really want to lose points. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Especially since when you auto battle your uh, gold ranked matches, you seem to get around 24 points per victory, as you see right here. If you manually battle it, I think you get around 12 to 16 in that range. So you're basically getting double the points. 5 times 24 gives me 120 points that I gain every day, and I want to lose those 120, if not more. So once again, there's a reason for me to run a less optimal defense team. Now, with all that said though, defense teams can only really win in two scenarios. The first scenario is where your attacker is manually controlling his party, but he has far less power than you, right? If your party, let's say, has 28k power and your attacker has, like, let's say, 20 or 22k, you're going to crush them, even if they manually play it out. The second scenario that you can really win is when you and your enemy have similar power levels, but they're using auto battle. In other words, defense teams cannot stop anyone who is manually fighting and has a high power level. That's actually why everyone for Arena is capped at around 2200 points. Because people are doing their gold ranked fights and they may decide to manually fight against the players to make sure they win so they can get the 12 flags for all the Trinity Crystal rewards and so on. So you can yeah, you basically can't stop anyone who has similar power level who is going to manually fight against you. So your best bet for designing a defense team is to counter auto battlers while keeping a high power level so that you can beat anyone who has a low power level and manually attacks. So what that means is every character you need you use in your defense team absolutely needs to have double class mastery as well as upgraded bonds right without let's say the bonds giving 13 percent hit points and defense and magic defense and a high amount of hit points defense and magic defense from the heart bond your characters probably will not survive for your you know for your turn to happen to crush the enemy in a counter attack so there's that limitation right there on your characters. They need double class mastery, they need high bond upgrades. If you don't have those, you can't use the characters. So with all that said, if your characters are upgraded with good survivability, so bonds, SSR gear, double class mastery, then you can start designing your defense team. So with all that said, let's jump in and talk about the teams. I'm going to have to break this down into several sections then. And the sections that I will break it down into is first, I'll talk about the end game stage defense team. 
where you have access to all the characters. The second one will be if people have Lestel, a defense team for fighting against Lestel. And the third team will be a defense team for the early stages of the game where Lestel and Juggler don't exist. So with that said, let's begin with the endgame team, right? And what I think is the best endgame defense team is actually the following. I don't even have the characters upgraded to run this defense team, as a side note, but this is what I think is the absolute best one. The combina- first things first is the combination of- One moment, okay, there we go. This is what I think is the absolute best defense team, okay? If each of these characters will survive the AoE blast, then you're golden. And that's what Juggler is also brought for. Uh, you'll definitely need double class mastery in both Rachel and Chloe, and they probably need much more upgrades. So, why is this the best defense team? Well, first of all, the way this works is Landius has a revival, okay? So even if he dies on turn one, he can revive. The second thing about this defense team is with Juggler here and his talent healing up characters between AoE blasts, you're not none of your characters will likely die. Okay? They'll be heavily debuffed though. However, with Chloe bringing only Aurora Ring, she will use the skill 100% no matter what on turn 1. Once Aurora Ring is used, your whole party will get 5 debuffs removed gain immunity to fixed damage, and also will restore 50% of their health at the end of their turn. So, Chloe right there will basically make your party healthy without any debuffs, so that everyone can act uh, and use their skills. Next will be Rachel, because Rachel, after she attacks, she will dispel debuffs from allies and heal them. So Rachel attacking will basically yeah, heal up other characters and even dispel debuffs. And then Lestelle with Lead Dance will definitely probably wipe out a character. You really don't for this specific situation, I you really don't want to run mine for. So the goal of Lestelle is really to move up and Lead Dance and hammer up the enemies apart, weakening them a lot. Landius as your tank will just guard. Whether he uses Resplendent Legends or Tranquility is kind of up to him. And on Juggler, I don't even have the skills for Juggler, but in this case you actually want an offensive Juggler. A Juggler that will attack the enemies as opposed to defend. So effectively what that means is you're going to want Beast Shock on Juggler. That's really the skill you really care about. The other skills will, should be passives, but you need to have Beast Shock on Juggler. So, with I'm just going to quickly bring up Juggler to show what Beast Shock does. And the Beast Shock skill, right, deals 1.5 times damage in battle, and before entering battle, you get, receive Beast Shock. Adds 40% of your magic defense and defense to attack, and renders all enemies one block adjacent to you unable to move or guard. Lasts one turn. So what this basically sums up as is Juggler will one-shot an enemy target, right? Rachel will likely one-shot another target. And then your third character, in this case Listel, will blood dance and hammer the remaining surviving enemies. Then you have So this would be the defense that would be the defense team. That's the what I think is the optimal. It could be that you replace Lestelle with someone else as another single target damage dealer. For example, Leon could be a very viable replacement to Lestelle in this kind of situation. In that case, you're aiming for a team that can basically kill off three enemies, right, on the first turn. Beast Shock, Rachel, and Leon to take down three opponents. So this is actually, this is a very viable alternative that can potentially work out very well. In terms of action order then for such a team, well, 
your tank will obviously go last. Chloe has to go first, right? Rachel, because she heals, goes next, and your two attackers will each take their action after having the debuffs removed and so on. So this would be the turn order, effectively. One thing you can also do as a possible alternative is also have, let's say, Liana or Tieris as your second healer, rather than Rachel, right? Because I know not everyone has Rachel built up. So in this kind of situation, it would the turn order would still be pretty much the exact same. Uh, Chloe, then Liana, then your two attackers, then your tank, right? You're, once again, you, what you're relying on is first Chloe to Aurora Ring to remove the debuffs. Next, Liana will pray her up to heal your characters basically to full. Then after they're to full, they can attack, attack, and guard with Landius. So this is pretty much... These are more or less the ideal versions of a defense team, but you need double class mastery, high star levels, and maximum uh, bond upgrades, especially heart bond on all these characters, and that's not easy to get. So, but this is the final defense team. So, now let's talk about the second defense team, which is the defense team when uh, Listel exists. Once Listel exists, you basically need a way to get rid of Blood Dance, right? And in that sense, and survive the AoEs. In that sense, until Chloe is available, it's not easy. Uh, if Chloe is not available, available at this time, Rachel and Chris are arguably the best characters because they can remove debuffs from allies within two blocks, right? So. These two characters are actually the best, assuming you have them leveled up. So once again, Rachel showing her incredible powers. Right? Liana can be brought, but it's dangerous. Okay. In very many ways, you if you bring Liana, you cannot even bring Prayer. Because Prayer, if she uses it, will basically kill off your whole party. That's already been damaged. So, and Juggler is pretty much a must for your characters to survive, in my opinion. Once the still exists, you pretty much need to have Juggler in your party to, to survive AoEs. So, more or less, this is the basic plan, you know. Without Chloe, you're going to have to rely on Rachel or Chris, you know, hopefully removing that debuff. And in terms of action order, it changes. Because Listel's uh, because Listel's Blood Dance applies that debuff, it this debuff, the Curse of Wounding, does only last one turn. So if you can have your characters move first before you heal, that's one way to survive against Listel. This assumes your characters can live, of course. But if they can, you're good. So in this kind of situation, what you actually want is, believe it or not, more AoE attackers because they use ranged attacks and AoEs, so they're not going to take any kind of retaliation damage. For example, bring Leon, right? If Leon's been affected by the Blood Dance, what will happen is he's going to chivalry up himself and take damage before he attacks. So it is possible to use Leon, because if you place Leon, like, uh, but it's a, more of a gamble if you do use him. So basically, something like this maybe the more optimal team. And in terms of action order, it completely flips itself. You will have an action order of something like this. Right? So, Rachel goes first to in hopes of removing debuffs, right? Next is Bozo to earthquake the enemy in hopes that he has access to Earthquake, of course. Next will be Juggler, right? Hopefully to be shock if he's been silenced, he won't be shocked, he'll just move up. Next is, actually, yeah. Next will be Leaden, because Leaden, your tank, will have to move to remove Curse of Wounding. And then finally will be Liana, who will theoretically prayer up your party to keep them healthy. 
<clears throat> so this would be the action order for the mid-game stages where Listel exists and Juggler exists, right? But Chloe does not. Yeah, once again, it's not a perfect team, but it's kind of what you make do with. And finally, will be the defense team for the early stages where neither Listel, uh, Juggler, or even let's say Rachel exists. In the early game stages, your defense team will probably be something like this as a result. Something like that, okay? So, rather than relying on AoE blasts in the early stages, you're going to rely on characters that can basically one-shot enemies, guaranteed. So Leon is a top choice in this kind of situation. Similarly, Elwyn is quite acceptable because he can faction buff and one-shot targets, right? Ledin will get faction buffed and he's not going to bring his. Instead, he'll probably bring two skills, Burning Sun and Divine Guard, so he can always maintain the Divine Guard buff. Bozal is here to Earthquake. Okay. Purely here to Earthquake, if he can. And finally, Liana is here for Act Again, Heal, and Prayer, or Tiaris, as the case may be. Depends on who your primary healer is. In terms of the action sequence, you'll probably want Liana first. Because in this kind of situation, without Listel, uh, to blood dance to make your healing into damage, Liana acting first is perfect. Once all your characters are healed, you want them to attack. So Leon will attack, Bozel will earthquake, and then Leden and and then Elwyn and Leden will act after that. So tanks usually act last in these situations. Right? This formation will have Leden be able to guard your other characters and Elwyn is in a position where he can't be attacked. You could theoretically put him up here in front, but you don't want to because putting him in front exposes more of your characters to enemy strikes on turn 1. Placing him here, for example, if the enemy Bozel is here, it can move 1, 2, 3, 4, and toss an Earthquake at you because you're 3 tiles away. So putting your character further back is an advantage. So this would be the early stage defense team, one example. Tank, Two damage dealers who can potentially one-shot the enemies, Earthquaker, and a healer. Alright, that sums up the defense squads, right? From end game stage to mid game stage to early game stage. So I'm now just going to put my original defense team back together. And the one that I'm using, as I mentioned, is one that I actually don't really want to win very often. So, but... It does grip me the occasional win. Yeah. You, I basically have a defense team that is threatening enough in power at 28k uh, so that I'm not going to get attacked a billion times, right? Because I do still want to stay above 1900. However, this defense team is also vulnerable enough because it has led in that people are willing to attack me. That pretty much sums up what this defense team is. It has high power to stop people without enough power from attacking me, but it doesn't have the optimal characters, so people are willing to attack me, because at the end of the day, I really actually want to lose more than 10 times every day, so that my score drops so that I can have easier battles and I'm not always facing against the top 3 enemies. Alright, so thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found this information useful. You know what, For temporarily, I may, maybe next week or something, once my juggler is fully upgraded, I may run the uh, a stronger defense team just to demonstrate it. So, you know, the Chloe team with the Chloe team with Landius as my tank and so on. But right now, I'm still not fully prepared to run that team. But I may run it for a bit just to demonstrate what a good defense team would look like. But yeah, so thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this information useful, and on that note, Nitro out.